For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to Atwalls Outdoors with me, Mike. Some of you guys a bit of a sort of pitching video on a new tent from Easy Camp. So this is the Easy Camp Moonlight TP. So for Moonlight Rain Seas, they do a TP and also a yurt. Uh, we've done a separate video for kind of the yurt, which you can all check out as well. But the one thing I do love about the TPs in general is that actually, to be fair, they are very easy to pitch. Um, you can't go too far wrong. Simply peg it out and with this case, stick a pole in the middle, guy it out and that's it. Simple as you like. So what we'll do first and foremost is kind of just spread it out and actually peg it out first. Now the tent, the sort of new line range is basically designed to be sort of kind of a uh, affordable, well, affordable tents with a bit more quirky designs. You know, not something that's good quality, not completely hindering on price. Still got a lot of nice features built into it. Uh, but like I said, it's more of a kind of a simplistic way. Plus you've got, even got this kind of really nice uh, bunting which can be supplied with it. Um, again, just to kind of make it stand out and give that kind of very sort of festival like kind of feel. So what we'll start by doing initially is basically pegging the front door and because it's almost like a hexagonal shape, kind of working our way around it. So we'll start to start there. So we're going to almost kind of against one another. So we'll get our door initially nice and square and then flip to the opposite side of here. We've got two pegging points directly opposite it. So again, we'll just kind of tension it back, get that again squared up against that side. So when we're doing this, we're sort of pulling against either side, we're pulling against that way, pulling against that way. Once we've done that, we've got kind of two wings we can kind of do, and there's just a couple of pegs in between as well. So we'll pull that out. Again, go across. Do the other side. So making sure it's not one side's got too much tension over the other. And then once you've got that point from there on, it doesn't really make too much of a difference to be fair. You can kind of go in any sort of order that you like from there. But usually when you put, put the pole up in the middle, you can see if there's any kind of distortion in the actual uh, ground sheet. And that's usually a kind of a clear cut sign that one's not tension enough or one's tension too much. So. Okay, so now it's quite happily secured down. All we're going to essentially now do is just put a middle pole up. So nice and easy. Just got a little bag located obviously in here. Okay, so we've got a top and a bottom to the pole itself. The bottom you find has got almost like the plunger uh, which goes down and you want to find that the adjusting pole up there is at the bottom. So initially we're just going to clamp that down. Now you can either assemble the pole kind of inside or outside. Again, you've got this little hanging points here clip um, for a lantern, but what I want to do is almost just find the kind of the, the central hub of the actual tent itself and put that kind of almost plunger like point directly into the center. So once we kind of found it there, we're just going to almost push that around it and just kind of force it directly upwards. Once we're kind of up from there, we can undo the adjuster, allow that to go down. There's a central pad directly in the middle, so you can very much push up against it and then clamp that in position. And then obviously the main part of it, all but a load of bunting, is up. Now, before we kind of do the rest of it, what I want to kind of do is undo this door and seal this door up. That way we're not going to try and overstress too many points. So, now that door's done up, what we kind of do is just get the remaining points. We'll peg that door down initially, actually. Get that looking nice and taut. And then do the guide points from there on. So, the guide points have got quite clever, so there's actually a little kind of Velcro part on the underneath it. So, if it is kind of a nice day, well, really you always need guide ropes, but if it is quite a nice day, what you can always do is get away with kind of just having it like so, so it's going for the garden for example, you can just pop it up on the main points. Alternatively then you've got these, um, the guy ropes really give kind of its main strength and hold it in position. 
like especially a day like today when the wind is blowing and it's more the gusts that's the biggest issue, really you want some sort of kind of securing, especially in the direction the wind's coming from. So what you also find is actually it'll kind of pull the uh, shape out and actually kind of increase your kind of internal height a little bit because it just helps to bring the sides out a little bit. Those go points are quite nifty. Here we go. To be fair, it probably takes more time to kind of do the guide points than it does actually to, to pitch it itself. It's like a magic trick, it just keeps coming out. You've also got some low level ventilation points as well around the tent. So what you can also do is, yet again, as you kind of go around and you kind of guide it out, you can just pop those out and that's going to help kind of with the airflow because essentially it's a single skin tent you need that kind of additional bit of airflow anyway uh, makes quite a big difference and again the kind of bunting you get supplied with a tent you can kind of position that as you want to just adds a bit more quirkiness kind of to the design itself if you feel you need to kind of adjust in fact I'll tell you what let's do, let's do a bit of the bunting now so we'll get that out get it looking like a I call it Ashley. <laughs> I'm not going for initially. I thought that would be a bit gimmicky, but um, I have to say, actually, that's quite nice. It's a nice little touch. If anything, it's going to kind of stop you from tripping over the guy ropes as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh dear. How many more we got? Only a few more. So yeah, there are some quite nice little features on it. The thing, like I said, because it's a single skin tent, really you want to be careful about sort of, you know, the sort of condensation of it. You do find that ventilation is a bit of key. So that's why you've got all these low level air vents around the tent itself. It means that you have a circulation of air, allow a moisture to sort of kind of hopefully pass through the points there. And again, you've got a, uh, a little witch's hat on top and that's again designed to be to the point where you can actually, um, oh, hello wind, uh, where you can actually help with that airflow, keep it a bit fresher inside. Uh, like I said, with sort of single skin tents, that always do, you do suffer for an awful lot of condensation just because you haven't got uh, that kind of ability for the moisture to pass through one layer onto the other. In fact, we'll get that uh, bunting out nice and neatly. But overall, quite nice, a little bit quirky, and again, sort of headroom wise, uh, it's quite sort of generous as well. There is almost like a little mini version of this, which you may have seen in the East Camp range called the I think it's the Blythe 400. Again, something very sort of similar, but with a slight bit difference that. It's more sort of smaller, more compact. But yeah, as you can see from there, quite a nice, quite simplistic pitch, which is the main sort of joyous of the kind of TP tent. And you've still got headroom in. We have got a separate kind of video uh, talking about sort of the ins and outs of it and giving a bit more of a, a detailed instruction to it. So feel free to check that out. For more information on this, you always check the link below. But alternatively, let's go to packing it away and show you how that's done as well. So now we come to packing it away. So it's basically the same process we've just literally just done, uh, but in reverse. So one thing I'll probably would say, if you want, if it's a windy day and you want to take a bit more strain off the, kind of the pole, you can also put that up and down uh, additionally or on its own. So if we sort of went round and did the guy ropes, no, we're not do it the normal way. We do it the way we've just done it. So let's firstly just find the bag, get that out of the actual tent itself. Uh, so take the guy ropes off now. You can obviously tie them up for quick of ease or put them back into that little holder we just saw underneath. But I can't be asked um, if I'm being honest with you. Um, so all I'm going to do is basically just go around, just unpeg the guide points. So once we've kind of done that, what I probably would recommend doing is basically we'll take the pole out through the central part itself. Um, again, we just undo kind of the, 
the adjuster, the little strap down there. So oh, take the weight off, off. and then clamp that back again. And we'll take that pole out initially. And we're just gonna bring that down nice and steady. So it's just kind of out of the way. Now, now we've got that pole out, we'll put it back in its bag. Because it's a bit windy, I'm gonna use that as a bit of a weight to stop other things flying off in the wind. In you go. This is also a perfect idea to give you a sort of a, a width on how wide your fold needs to be. So you always use that to determine how wide it needs to be. What I'm gonna do is we wanna kind of fold it directly into the middle. So if I pull all the fabric down, one thing you find if you, this, well, to be fair, the problem being we're actually directly into the wind. So you can in many ways just almost unpeg it, turn it around so the wind's pushing the air out of tent rather than going directly back in. But I'm gonna kind of work from one side across to the other and we'll just kind of try and come folding it into the middle. Again, if you really wanted to, you can use your kind of your, your pole idea as a bit of a, a guide. For me, I kind of know in my head how wide it needs to be. But with each kind of point, just kind of press it down a little bit. What we then do is do the next fold. By going into the middle, we're basically bringing all of the internal air directly in line with the door. So when we kind of roll it from back to front, we're not so only uh, worried about all the air going direct to a, to a dead end in many ways. And again, if you're worried about what you can also do is with the wind, just pop on the end. That guide wise is a bit narrow than I need to be, but we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Fold it over. As long as it gets back in the bag at the end, that's the main thing. Look at right. So, we'll line all that up. When we do our kind of final roll from the back towards the front, We'll push all the external air out. What I'm gonna do now is prep. If you get a little trick, you can get a bit of the cord that you're tied up with. If you put that partially underneath it, when you come to roll it, it's already ready in position. So I'm gonna worry about it again. And again, if you want to, you can always, again, with using your weights for rolling it, which you're most likely gonna be. What you can also do is always just put one peg in that side. If you want to sort of turn the whole kind of part round. Otherwise, that happens. <laughs> so, get that tie on in the middle. Let's keep it at bay. Stop it unrolling unnecessarily. And then we've got a sealed into the bag. Pop that in there. And then is it up? Look at there we go. So I said, easy, simple to do, nice and big, small kind of pack size as well. So Okay, I'm going to give you a bit more of an idea about how you're going to kind of pitch the Easy Camp Moonlight TP Star Tent.